watching Amazing Fire TV. Amazing Fire TV. Impacting the world for Christ. The Lord, welcome to Fit and Grace Life. This is where we share all that Christ has given us. And I pray that you will not miss your portion this hour in the mighty name of Jesus. Invite your family members, let us enjoy Christ at this hour. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us here again to share your word, to impart the word, to spread the gospel, to tell the world about the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the Almighty Father, who is reigning supreme. Lord, we ask that this word, O oh Lord, we transform our lives, O oh Lord, and we become doers of this word, and we acknowledge you that you are God and there is none like you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, for some time we've been looking at this series from the book of Daniel, and um, I, I want to believe that um, if you are familiar with the book of Daniel, you will notice that the first six chapters, you can see how, how, how this, our God, you know, shows his sovereignty and supremacy over every other God and over every other king. And so we've been looking at this series, the God of gods and the king of kings. That is the God, capital G, and against the small g's. And the capital K, the king against the small kings hallelujah so today by the grace of god we'll be going to chapter four uh, of the book of daniel and today we title this chapter the most high rules in the kingdom of men the, the most high rules in the kingdom of men amen praise the lord in this chapter we are going to look at the popular dream of Nebuchadnezzar, the second dream of Nebuchadnezzar, and that led him to become an animal. And there and there, we can see how God is sovereign and is supreme. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Without wasting time, let's look at some um, verses in this chapter because it's quite a lengthy one. And um, we we'll look at the key um, verses. You know, in this chapter, the king had a dream. This this we call his second dream. And uh, uh, let's just take the first three verses. Nebuchadnezzar, the king to all people, to all peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth. Peace be multiplied to you. I thought it good to declare the signs and wonders that the Most High God has worked for me. Before, you know, King Nebuchadnezzar, you know, feel that he is God, is mighty, is a king that is great. As at that time, Nebuchadnezzar was the greatest ruler in the whole world. He was number one ruler. Amen. And look at verse 3. He said, how great are his signs and how mighty his works. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation. Amen. Verse 4, he said, I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house and flourishing in my palace. Verse 5. And then, uh, <clears throat> praise the Lord, I saw a dream which made me afraid. And the thoughts on my bed and the vision of my head troubled me. Therefore, I issued a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me that they might make known to me the interpretation of the dream. Then the magician, the astrologers, the shadows, and the soothsayer came in, and I told them the dream, but they did not. They did not make known to me its interpretation. But at last, Daniel, hey, came before me. His name is Belshazzar, according to the name of my God. Can you see? His name is the Spirit of the Holy God. You can see the distinction between His own God and the God of God, the Holy God, and that is our God. Where the Bible says they that know their God shall be strong and do exploit. In the world today, there are people that are still serving this small God. There are still people that who serving the works of their hand. Their money has become their God. Their position has become their God. They are they, they have some other gods. They are, they are tribal gods. They are family gods. But there is one 
and the holy God, the most holy God, that was the God of the uh, of Daniel. The God of Daniel, Mishra, Shedad, and Abednego. That is our God. Amen. And I told him the dream before him, saying, um, verse um, 6, let's, let, let's go on quickly, verse 9. Ah, Beshesaza, Yeshima of the magician, because I know that the spirit of the holy God is in you, and no secret trouble you. Explain to me the vision of my dream <laughs> that I have seen and its interpretation. This vision, this were the vision of my head while on my bed, you know. And he told Daniel the, 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 the dream just to, to, to save some time. And um, uh, when, when you look at um, what Daniel, how he responded to the dream, the Bible says he paused and he was looking at him. He was looking at the king for a while because he wondered. Well, let's jump to verse 19. <clears throat> After he had listened to the dream from, uh, from Nebuchadnezzar the king, you know, Daniel was, was, was I mean, he, he became so, so, so worried. And, uh, okay, let's, let, let's look at it from verse, um, okay, verse 17. For, from verse 17. Yeah, I like that. This decision is by the decree of the watchers and the sentence by the word of the Holy One in order that the living may know that the most I rule in the kingdom of men. I'll give it to whomever he wills and um, sets over it the lowest of men. The most I rules in the kingdom of men. Hallelujah. May God help us. Malik Ayalaba. You see, each time I read the book of Daniel and I look at this dream, it, it makes me to be very humble. It gives me, you know, a, a, there's a fear comes upon me that I, I, I pray that what happened to Nebuchadnezzar will not happen even to my enemy. And that, that was the reaction of, 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 of Daniel. And verse 18 said, This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now you, Bethesda, declare it, declare its interpretation, since all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to know, uh, to make known to me the interpretation. Verse 19, see the reaction. See how. He said, But you are able, for the Spirit of God is in you. Verse 19. Then Daniel, whose name was Bethesda, was as not astonished for a time and his thoughts troubled him so the king spoke and said Bethesda do not let this um, dream or its interpretation trouble you can you see because as the king was speaking telling Daniel this his dream the Holy Spirit of God the Spirit of the Most High God was giving him the interpretation right within him and the meaning is so powerful and scary that Daniel became troubled. Hmm. See his response. He said, My Lord, may the dream concern those who hate you, and interpretation concerns your enemy. In other words, and look, may it not happen to you. <laughs> this dream that, I, that you have told me, hey, may it not be for you, may it be for your enemy. Because the meaning is, is supercharged with great consequence. The, 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 the meaning is so scary that God was about to do what has never um, I mean what has never been done before. He is God. I want to tell you, my, my dear listener, you that you are under the sound of my voice, God is still doing new things. He's a God who can still do what has never been done before. You know, Jonas just, just remind me of, of Moses. When they gathered against him, <laughs> he said, if I be a man of God, he said, let God do what has never happened before. Let the ground open. And the ground open, which has never happened before. Hey, may, 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 may we not provoke God, may we not sin against God to the essence that he will do for us what has never been done to any man before. God is a merciful God, but He's also a God of judgment. I want you to follow this dream 
very carefully the interpretation of the dream very carefully because we know the story very well but there are some things we need to pick out of this dream of the experience of Nebuchadnezzar so that we need to humble ourselves you can see the statement in that verse in order that the living may know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men many of us we do know that it is heaven that rules in the affairs of men hallelujah let's let's move on <laughs> so verse 20 he said the tree that you saw which grew and became strong whose eyes reached to the heavens and which could be seen by all the earth is what? Whose leaves were lovely and its fruits abundant, and which was food for all under which the beasts of the fields dwelt, and in whose branches the birds of the heaven had their homes, it is you, O king, who have grown. Mm. Ah, may God have mercy and become strong. For your greatness has grown and reaches. To the heavens and your dominion to the end of the earth. And in as much as the king saw watchers, a only one coming down from heaven and saying, Chop down, my God. Chop down the tree and destroy it, but leave its stones and roots in the earth, bound with a band of iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field. Let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let him graze with beasts of the field. Till what? You know, and that is where we are going. Till you know <laughs> that, <laughs> I, I, we are away now. Till seven times pass over him, this verse 24. This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord, the king. Mm. Mercy, verse 25 says, They shall drive you from men, your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. Have you ever heard that before? Before now, nothing like that has ever happened. That a man will become like a beast, and his dwelling will be among the beasts, and they shall make you like what? <laughs> like eat grass, like oxen. They shall wet you with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over you till you know that is the key. Till you know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whoever he chooses. Now, I want us to pause at this place and take note of it that God wanted to sentence Nebuchadnezzar to the bush like the beast. And become like us, like like animal, whose claws will grow out like animals, whose skin will be clothed with, um, with, with with so much of, of feather and all that, and it will be in the bush for seven years until he comes back to his senses, till he knows that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men. My prayer for you, under the sound of my voice, may your case not, de may your life not degenerate to a level whereby God will give you up and make you to learn a lesson in a, a very hard way until you know the most high rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. God wanted to confirm and show to Nebuchadnezzar that look, I am the one that put you there. I put you on that throne and make you the strongest king in the old world, the greatest king in the old world. But there is still another God, another king that is above all other kings and is the one that rules. It is heaven that rules. Not, not the earth. It is not our president that is ruling. It is the most high that is ruling. <laughs> if the most high rules and step in into an affair, you know, the president will bow. Hey, the governor will bow. The legislators will bow. Whoever feels that he is God over our life will bow. Once when the most high rules and step into the affairs of our life. My prayer is that may pride not enter into our life. May pride not take over our lives. Look at verse 26. And it says, 
<coughs> and in as much as they gave the command to leave the stump and root of the trees, your kingdom shall be assumed to you after you come to know that heaven rules. Amen. It is heaven that rules, not the heart. Heaven rules the heart. It is what the heaven determines that 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 stand here on earth. If the heaven rules that this is going to be and it shall be. If the heaven rules this shall not be, it shall not be. My prayer is that may we always look up to heaven that rules. <laughs> the psalmist in Psalm 120 where said, I lift up my eyes unto the hills. From where comes my help? My eyes come from the Lord, you know, the maker of heaven and earth. You know, we look unto heaven who rules. My prayer is as you lift up your eyes unto the hills, as you look up to heaven for your for your supply, as you look up to heaven for your grace, for your protection, for your for your family. Heaven will rule in your favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Heaven will rule in your favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Now let's look at verse twenty-seven. Therefore, O King, let my advice be acceptable to you. Break off, break off your sins. And by being righteous and your iniquity by showing mercy to the poor perhaps there may be a lengthening of your prosperity can you see god looks at nebuchadnezzar he showed him that dream for to give him another rope longer rope so that maybe he might repent see the bible says look what god has seen against him is living an unrighteous life, is proud, is not showing mercy to the poor, and God wants to give him another chance. He gave him that dream. Look at verse 28. And all this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. Immediately this dream happened, one would have expected that immediately King Nebuchadnezzar will become an animal. No! God gave me a, gave him a one year old, one year I mean, uh, um, opportunity to repent. Verse 29, he said, At the end of the 12 months, he was walking about the royal palace of Babylon. She is at, see verse 30. The king spoke, saying, It's not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling. By my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty, what an arrogant, what a proud, what a, what, what, what a way of saying that, look, I am God. I made all things myself. I wanted to look at the next verse. Say, why the word was still in his king's mouth, a voice fell from heaven. I tell you, heaven rules. The voice came from heaven, not from below. The voice came from heaven, not from beneath. Just like the voice that came when Jesus Christ was being baptized and the Bible said the heaven was open and uh, the heaven spoke <laughs> that this is my beloved son. You know, the voice came from heaven because heaven rules. I say heaven will rule in your favor. But take note of this. All your actions, your life, the way you behave, your, your heart, God sees, heaven, rule, uh, heaven, heaven looks at your heart. The Bible says the word was just in his mouth. And now, heaven rules now. See how heaven rules. And a voice fell from heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you. Why? Because who gives the kingdom is heaven. Who puts you in that position is heaven. Who makes you what you are is heaven. You are what you are by the grace of God. Any day you feel that, look, ah, is this not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling? You remember the story of the rich ruler, the rich man who made so much harvest and he was thinking of what to do with it. He was thinking, what am I, what am I going to do with this great harvest? Okay, I will pull down. I will build another banner. I will say to my soul, oh, re relax and begin to enjoy. And what happened? The Bible says this is a foolish man. Who holds his soul? And the Bible says, tonight your soul will be demanded of you. And that's exactly what happened here. To every man that looks only upon himself as the Lord, as the only source of his living, I have this news for you that you are not the owner of your soul. You are not the one in charge of your life. Heaven rules and heaven will speak. 
you need to repent. We need to come back to the fear and the knowledge of God and humble ourselves. Don't let the spirit of Nebuchadnezzar come upon you. Humble yourself wherever position God has placed you. If somebody was there before and you are not going to be the last to be there. You are going to be moved from there. Another person will be there. Pray that God will move you up. If you are proud, God will move you down. But when you are humble, God will move you up. My prayer is that the spirit of humility will come upon you, will come upon all of us, even including myself. As I'm preaching to you, I'm preaching to myself. Because it, as I, what I speak to one, I speak to all. We need to close ourselves with, with humility. Verse 32, And they shall drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make you eat grass like oxen, and seven times shall pass over you. Seven times shall pass to seven years, until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever He chooses. That kingdom, that position, that greatness is from God. If you are not humble, He will take it from your hand. Verse thirty-three. That 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 very hour the word was fulfilled concerning Nebuchadnezzar. God did not waste time in that. He was driven from men and ate grass like us. His body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his ears had grown like eagles, feathers and his nails like birds. May God have mercy. Hey, verse 35, 4, 4. Uh, 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 the, the name now we go as close. Hmm. And at the end of the time, that is at the end of, look at verse 34. This is where I'm drawing my conclusion and my counsel to everyone under the sound of my voice please listen to this i nebuchadnezzar lifted up my eyes to heaven and my understanding returned to me and i blessed the most high this god is a gracious god god have already said it at least seven times we passed seven years we passed and god returned his senses back to him god gave him back the sense of a king the sense of, of a normal human being no more the sense of an animal you know god has the power to make an animal to speak and god also has the power to make a man to uh, to become an animal you remember how animal was speaking to the prophet of God. Uh, no, not prophet of God. Baal was not a prophet of God. Pro uh, Baal was, was, was another prophet. And see, a bad I mean. And animal spoke. And now God is making a man. Animal spoke like a man. And now a man is, is behaving, has become an animal. There is nothing God cannot do. Let's humble ourselves. See, I Nebuchadnezzar said, look, and I bless the most high and praise and honor him. Who lives forever? Nebuchadnezzar thought he will live forever. Many of us think that we will live forever. Many of us think that we will be in that position forever. Many of us think that, look, everything is going to be for that. For, no. Come to your senses. Have the fear of God. He said, for his dominion is what? <laughs> For his dominion is an everlasting dominion. Only the dominion of God that is everlasting, the God of gods. And his kingdom is from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. So Nebuchadnezzar now look at the whole earth. He has seen that look, everyone in the whole earth, they are like we are like nothing. We and there is, and he said he does according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. My God, that is our God for you. No one can restrain his hand or say to him, What have you done? My God, you see, this statement, I, I mean, I want you to enter into our, our brain, our medulla of Lagata to know that look, you cannot question God. Many things happen to us and begin to say, why me? You can't, you dare not say that. Nebuchadnezzar said, look, what, no man can say, what have you done? You can't, who query God? Did anyone say, look, God, why did you send Nebuchadnezzar to, be, to the bush? Can any man query God? Nobody, you can't query God, I can't query God. Let the fear of God rule our heart. Let's humble ourselves. Verse 36. At the same time, my reason returned to me. And for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and splendor returned to me. 
my counselors and all the noble resorted to me. I was restored to my kingdom and the excellent majesty was added to me. That 37, the last verse. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven. All of whose works are truth and his ways and justice. Heaven rules in the affairs of men. And those who walk in pride, he is able to put down. Let it sink into your sense, into your heart. That if you walk in pride, you will be pulled down. The Bible says, pride goes before a fall. Before a man falls, God <laughs> allow him to become arrogant. God does not just pull people down. He only puts for people who feel that they are God. My prayer is that God will clothe you with humility. Every spirit of this is me, we, God will remove it from your heart. And God will remove pride from your heart. But don't let God humble you. You better humble yourself. You better be clothed with humility so that God will not humble you. The God that humbled Nebuchadnezzar may not humble you. But it's better for us to say, Lord Almighty, have mercy on me. Remove every element of pride from my heart. If you are hearing my voice, if you honor the sound of my voice, you have not given your life to Christ. It is pride in itself to reject Christ. Why? Because you feel that you can stand and you meet God on your own time. You can't get to God on your own time. Or, you, or else you have become God yourself. But when you give your life to Jesus, God Almighty, we fill you with the Spirit, with the Holy Spirit of God. And the Spirit of joy, the Spirit of meekness, the Spirit of humility will be operating in your life. Are you ready to give your life to Jesus this hour? I just want you to say this short prayer of salvation with me. Because that's the best thing that can happen. It took Nebuchadnezzar to become an animal because before he became to praise God. And now I don't want you to go that route. Take this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I am a sinner, but you died for me. Jesus Christ come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. Take control of my life from this day forward. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Congratulations if you have said that prayer. Make sure the next thing now is to join yourself to a Bible-believing church. And if you are in the city of Houston, I want to invite you to Faith and Grace Church. Here we preach the undiluted word of God that can make you to, 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 to inherit eternity with God. And if you, our service time is by 9 a.m., please come and receive the engrafted word of God that can save you. My prayer is that this word that you have heard, you become the doer of it. And God will clutch you with the spirit, with the garment of humility. And you will not go the route of King Nebuchadnezzar. In Jesus' name I pray for you. Amen. You are now watching Amazing Fire TV.